everyone, welcome back to the stream. Tonight I am starting a brand new game. It's something I backed on Indiegogo uh, a couple months back. It's an independent game called Rain Swept, and apparently oh, it was inspired a bit by Deadly Premonition, so of course I have to play it. Um, all I know is that there's I got an FBI agent going to uh, a northwestern town to solve a murder. So, I'm excited to play. Oh wow, 1996? I was in 8th grade. 8th <laughs> grade or freshman, depending on the time of- No, September, so... <laughs> freshman? Yes, I had to be a freshman in high school. And someone blew their brains out. Okay, we are off to a violent start. Of course, the agent has to smoke. Oh, hey! How are you doing tonight? I don't know, you might have missed it, but it opened up uh, September 1996 and someone just shot themselves in the head. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that. Is the baby bird okay? I don't catch a cold again. So, oh, there we go. I just got here. I'm not going back now. Oh, okay. That's my car. <laughs> well, sorry, dude, I didn't know that. Okay. Sorry, I gotta figure these controls out soon. How do I... Oh, there we go. Oh, options. Oh, I can do... I can do gamepad. Maybe I'll do that. Okay, let me get my controller. Ugh. Okay, yeah, this will be easier for me. I'm not too great at using the keyboard and mouse. Um, they've been here a while, it looks like. Now, why would... You don't want to take it for a drawer, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm really interested to see how this uh, comes out. Terrible. Pressing right stick. It's a terrible, terrible business, all this. Okay. Oh, I am pressing it, and you're not doing anything. Oh, maybe that's why. Okay. Oh, there we go. Cool. All right, I think I got this. Uh... Oh, 
now he's running. Okay. Woohoo! I like this um I like this art style. It's very unique. So Ooh, let's look at the window. An open window. Hmm. A few more minutes, I wanna see what happens. Oh, that must be the crowd. too close to the crime scene. A number of cops are few. This is poor. <laughs> oh, so is he an FBI agent with uh, a town who does not know how to solve a crime? This seems very familiar. I wonder if he's a fan of movies too. Speaking of your, you can't come in. <laughs> My dog is paw pawing at the door. Uh. Now, what's he up to? We can't talk to him? Okay. Ma'am, please, you need to back away a little. What's happened here? A murder! Johnny, get under the umbrella! I would assume Johnny's the guy in the hoodie. Granny, I want to leave. It's really cold. Can we go back to the shop now? We could see all this coming a mile away. Dude, is that like a, a reverend too? Like everyone's come out to this crime scene. <laughs> okay, hold on, I wanna let him in. Okay. Ma'am, please. Granny, please. All right, Johnny, let's go. There's no point standing here now. Okay, bye, Granny. I knew this would happen. We we should have done something. Oh, oh that's the guy in the uh, denim. Okay. There's nothing we could have done. Chris did this, I'm sure of it. <sighs> it looks like that, doesn't it? Detective Stone, right? The chief is inside. They've been waiting for you. Okay, you need to control the crowd. <laughs> you need to push the crowd away from the scene, officer. What? You'll have to speak up. I can't hear you over the rain. It's not coming down that hard, is it? The crowd. Handle them. There could be evidence out here. We can't have the crowd trampling all over the evidence. Oh yes, uh, I'm trying. Hey, hey Williams, what the hell are you doing? I'm trying to prop up this tape, sir. It won't stay. We'll get some sticks and drive them in. Oh, you guys are really pathetic. <laughs> yes, sir, Richard! Don't call for Richard. Richard's on leave. Do it yourself. Goodness. Sorry, detective. The thing is, we're short on manpower here. We weren't prepared for this kind of thing. First time in decades. There hasn't been a bird around here in 25 years. And to top it off, this goddamn rain. Just get the crowd under control. I'm heading inside. Yes, detective, don't worry. Richard, I mean, Williams. Okay, Woohoo! can I leave? Wee. I don't know, maybe. I, I know like Twin Peaks and Deadly Premonition were inspirations, so I wouldn't be surprised if it does. Oh, I've already done this. Okay, so I guess... Did I get everything? I talked to that guy, right? No. Rolls again. Whoa. How'd I do that? Oh. No. 
He doesn't like my controller at the moment. Okay, whatever, I'll figure it out. That's the way inside. I wonder why Chief sent me all the way to Pineview for this case. Only one way to find out. I did the... Yeah, I did. Hmm, should I go in? No, I'll stand out here. Let's go in. No point hanging around out here. Oh god. That's not good. That's the sheriff. I should talk to him first. What happens if I don't? Not very professional. I hope they know what they're doing. Yeah, it won't give me any prompts. Michael? Huh? What the f- What? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Did he have a stroke or something? Oh my god. Okay. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> Clearly he's not. Uh, I think so, yeah. I guess I'm just a little tired after the long drive here. Uh, okay, if you say so. Detective Stone, right? The head office called in to say that you'd be joining us here for this investigation. I'm Sheriff Harris, and this is Officer Watts. We appreciate the department sending help, but, er, uh, I don't think we'll need it. This case is ready to be wrapped up. What do we have here? The victims here are Christopher Green, age 26, died from a bullet wound to the head. Looks self-inflicted. Is that the guy I saw in the opening? And Diane Miller, age 24, single bullet wound through the abdomen. abdomen. The, vil the victims lived together, were unmarried. Okay. Any signs of an intruder? No signs of forced entry. The door was locked from the inside when we arrived. The, the window was open. Oh. An officer climbed through the open window here to open the door. There are no footprints outside that window. Except the officers. He was careful. I don't know, you guys. No signs of struggle or marks on the bodies either. What was the time of death? According to the next door neighbor, a single gunshot was heard around 015 hours. We received a call at about 020 hours and we were here in another five minutes. We found them dead upon arrival and confirmed the timing. Wait, I already did this one. Oops. What do we know about the weapon? Both shots were fired from a 38 caliber special revolver. The ballistics report will let us know more. So, which one's the sheriff? I guess the balding guy. Any witnesses? Just the next door neighbor who claims to have heard a single gunshot. We can interview him shortly. I guess that's it. Honestly speaking, Detective, we think it's pretty obvious what's taking place here. What do you mean? They had a reputation. They weren't exactly a happy couple. The whole town knows this. Diane was a shot at oh sorry. Diane was shot at point blank range with Chris's gun, probably by Chris. And then he went ahead and shot himself, as the wound is clearly self-inflicted. So, you see, sending you here unnecessarily complicates things. Are you George? 
Let's qu let's be like York and question their abilities. <laughs> I'm getting to think it was a very good idea, in fact. I er uh It's obviously a case of murder suicide detective. <laughs> He's being sarcastic. It's everything's figured out already. Okay. So we've uh, we've got it all figured out here already, huh? If that was sarcasm, I'll ignore it. But yes, more or less. I uh, er, er, are you suggesting that there was a domestic violence involved? It would would seem so. It was never reported, but that doesn't mean it didn't happen. So rumors. You may call it that, but uh, there, when there's smoke, there's fire. I'm not sure about that. And they were never really able to fit into this town. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> they were new here. Moved in about six months ago. Never got out much. Didn't make any friends. You don't need to analyze the obvious detective. That would only be inefficient. I am a little confused why he was called in if the cops were pretty sure that this was a murder-suicide. Like, the... People, outside resources don't just, you know, wander into town just because... Well, maybe it's because uh, this is their first murder in decades, so I guess maybe that's why they would send in uh, uh, this guy. <laughs> this is Officer Blunt. <laughs> is she going to be blunt? I hope so. She will assist you through the course of your work here. I like also how she just ran in. <laughs> like, oh shit, I'm late. Hello, detective. And uh, one more thing. We are looking to wrap this case up quickly and cleanly. We don't want to drag it if it can be helped. We have an important festival coming around in a week's time. So you might say this er uh, rather bad timing. So there's no need to go around complicating things, all right? Just enjoy the nature. Take a walk around in the trees, buddy. Just give me a story that works, and we can close this case quickly. Ooh, let's give sar sarcastic reply. I'm going full Francis York Morgan here. Yeah, sure. Can't wait to wrap this case up. Or, yeah, all right then. I'll see you soon. Goodbye. Okay, then. Bye. Ahem. Anyway. How... Hey, look around the room if you like. Come talk to me when you're done. So, yeah, I, I, I'm guessing Blunt here's Emily. That balding guy, was he supposed to be Thomas or George? He seemed too friendly to be George. This guy must be George. Gunshot to the stomach. The damage and the residue was just that the shot was taken at point blank range. That rules out the possibility of her being shot from the open window. She would have been in line of sight from the outside, though. There's no mistaking it. The perpetrator would have to be inside the house to cause this kind of revolt. Whether that was Chris or someone else, it's hard to say at the moment. built some of the furniture around this house. A 38 caliber special, as Officer Watts said, it looks pretty old. It can hold six rounds. It's a revolver, so it wouldn't have ejected the shell casings, they should still be in the barrel. There are three unused rounds still in here and three spent shell casings. This means three rounds were fired from this gun at some point of time. If two were fired last night, where's the third? Or was it shot last night or on some other day? 
gun belonged to Chris, according to Officer Watts. Let's assume Chris or Diane weren't the ones to use it. Is there anyone else that could have known where they kept the gun? From Pineview? I, oh, you can talk. I really doubt it. Remember, no signs of forced entry. Could it be someone they were comfortable with or trusted? No one I can think of. Thirty-eight special rounds. It's a box of fifty rounds. There are forty-four here, which means six are missing, two were used last night. There are three still loaded in the gun, as we saw earlier. If two were shot last night, there's still one unaccounted for. Was that shot last night too, or some on, or on some other day? Red wine. It looks like a new bottle was opened yesterday. No one drank from this glass. It would seem that Chris was sitting by himself at the table and drinking wine, waiting for someone to join him. Probably Diane? Whether he is waiting for her or someone else, we don't know yet. A glass of wine was knocked over. This looks like wine, but there seems to be blood in here as well. How did blood splatter occur? Sorry. How did blood splatter in this direction? Oh, how did blood splatter in this direction? It doesn't make sense. Those drops of blood feel out of place too. Officer Blunt, I think there's been more than two gun sh sh <clears throat> I think there's been more than the two gunshots that we're seeing here. Oh, is that how you gonna say? Okay. Bullet wound to the head. The skull is badly damaged, and most of the side has been blown off. His body position and the way he fell would indicate that he was sitting sideways on the chair, facing where Diane's body is now. shot indicates that he was shot from the side. If someone shot him, they were standing in front of the in front of the refrigerator. No clues there though. He could have been shot from that window. At the moment it's shut. Must get it checked for fingerprints and footprints outside. Could someone have entered and left through here? We should have the fingerprint results in a couple days, detective. Don't forget, there aren't any footprints outside. If someone shot him from outside, then Chris would have sat facing the refrigerator. That would make sense. That way, the killer wouldn't need to enter the house. But in that case, who shot Diane? Hmm, gunpowder residue on his right hand. Hard to disagree with Officer Watts here. There's strong evidence for the victim shooting himself. Unless it was made to look that way. The chair's fallen on its back. Looks like Chris fell off the chair before or after being shot. I think that's everything. done here? Yes. Yes, I'm done. All right, let's have a chat with Mr. Willis outside. Is that the neighbor? Probably. That's convenient. And the crowd left. Ooh, coffee. Right, this is Mr. Willis. He lives right there next door. Coffee detective? Yes. I get my fortunes from it. <laughs> you can ask him any questions you may about last night. Right, Mr. Willis. 
Can you tell me everything that you saw or heard during last night's events? Well, see, I'm, I'd headed off to bed around 11 p.m. as I usually do after a glass of whiskey. Helps me sleep, you know. Anyway, somewhere around 12.15 a.m., I'd say I was woken up by a loud bang. I ran to my bedroom window that looked straight down at their place. And what did you see? Nothing. Their kitchen lights were on, but that's about it. I went to my phone and called Officer Watts here straight away. Okay. How long did it take you to get to the window once you heard the shot? A couple of seconds, Detective. Not more than five, I'd say. I nearly fell out of my bed when I heard the shot, so you might say I was halfway there already. Okay. Did you see any okay. Did you see any sort of activity on the street? Anything unusual? No, Detective. Everything was exactly the same as always. You said you heard a single shot? Yes. The whiskey usually knocks me out pretty good, so if there had been more, I didn't hear him. Do you live alone, Mr. Willis? Yes, I do. Never got married. It's a uh, long story. One meant to be talked over a couple of whiskeys. Know what I mean? Yeah. Can anyone confirm your whereabouts? I... No, I was just home, you see. Am I a suspect? It's procedure, Mr. Wi I know Mr. Willis. He's cool. Okay, George, shut up. <laughs> Let's react. We need to have a talk later, officer. Talk about what? Just later, okay? Okay, Sherlock, whatever you say, Holmes. <laughs> uh, he's not amused. Yeah, I'm liking it so far, too. Okay. Did Chris and Diane have many visitors, friends, etc.? No, no, not at all, in fact. And all this time, I only maybe saw Jack coming over to fix their car. Nah, people rarely ever visited them because they mostly kept to themselves, see? Never made any friends here. But sometimes folks don't like those kinds either, so I can't really say, you know what I mean? No, please elaborate. You won't find anyone crying over their deaths here. Nobody really knew them. They never got out much. I'm only here for six months. Jeez. Is there anything else you'd like to share with us, Mr. Willis? I, er, I don't know if this is useful, but... You might have heard about Chris and Diane. They looked pretty happy when they first moved in. More recently, though, I heard Diane crying a couple times, usually late at night. See, the whiskey knocks me out early, so maybe that's why I never heard all of this before. But a couple times, I was up a little later. One night, about a month ago, I heard pretty bad things. There were some loud sounds, like stuff being flung around and such. See? I heard someone crying. I was thinking to myself that maybe I should call the police, but then it quieted down all of a sudden. We never received any calls for domestic violence, but people have often talked of stories of this kind. Can you remember what you heard? Well, sorry. Can you remember when you heard this, Mr. Willis? Well, I was up late. Excuse me. Well, I was up late night writing an important letter. I think it must have been somewhere between the first and third last month. First to third September. All right. Anything else? No. That's all I know about this. Right. Thanks for your help, Mr. Willis. We'll be in touch if you need anything else. No problem, and uh, thanks for the coffee. So, Detective, you said you wanted to have a talk later. Is it now a good time? Yes, officer. Please don't tell witnesses they're not under suspicion, especially not in front of them. 
So basically, you're telling me that I don't know how to do my job. <laughs> is that it? <sighs> all I'm saying is, this case isn't all wrapped up as you'd like to believe. How can you not see what's right in front of you? It is so obvious. Mr. Willis didn't see anything outside the house after the gunshots, and there are no signs of anyone forcing entry either. On top of that, considering how rough things were between the two of them, you heard what Mr. Willis said, right? Uh, should I be an asshole or nice? I want to be an asshole. I'm being York. Are you seriously jumping into conclusions, officer? What has it been? Barely hours since the murder? Do you think there's enough data to form a conclusion? Mr. Willis's account only forms a part of the complete picture. It isn't enough. Well, what, what about the door, huh? How is it locked from the inside? Explain that. I checked the door. It locks itself from the inside when you pull it closed. Oh, closed. Whether you pull it from the outside or push it from the inside. I'm not saying that that's what happened. I'm saying that there's no conclusive evidence yet. Well, fine then. Dig as deep as you like, detective. You won't find anything new here. Okay. I was perfectly capable of handling this case myself, but of course the head department had to complicate things. In any case, Sheriff Harris will probably want to wrap up this case before the festival, so don't expect him to wait for more than a week. I, I didn't realize we were... okay. I have to head to the station now. Officer, escort Detective Stone to his hotel. Will do, sir. We'll come back in the evening to search his house. Letters, diaries, that things of that sort. All right. Oh, all right. <laughs> when can we expect the autopsy results? Day after tomorrow, according to the coroner, but I'll confirm and let you know. I'm guessing that there were more than two bullets shot last night. We should take another look around the kitchen to make sure. Three bullets, but... Hmm... We're actually glad that you're here, you know. I did not get that uh, impression. <laughs> Although sh the sheriff and Officer Watts would rather not admit it. Even to themselves. This is like the first murder here in the last... Whoa! Last hundred years or so. We have no idea how to deal with it. Um, I mean... Uh, yeah, that's a surprise. It's alright. Well, I'm talking to her. I think she's the love interest, so it'll be nice. It's alright. I know what you mean. I just joined the force a month back, for instance. And a murder already? I'm not sure if I'm ready. I kind of knew them, you could say. I've never known anyone that's been murdered before, you know? It's kind of weird. A bit sad. I know as an officer, I'm not supposed to feel that way and all. You'll be fine. Give it time. Thanks, detective. Uh, tell me about Chris and Diane. What do you know about Chris and Diane? Well, not much. It's mostly what Mr. Willis said earlier. Nobody knew them, really. They came in here, kept to themselves. You'd hear story about them, stories about them. Everyone thought they were some kind of... Damn. <laughs> this town is very judgmental. <laughs> Oh my god, these people moved here and they kept to themselves. There must be something weird about them. I admit, I kind of agreed agreed with that sentiment too. I feel bad about it, that now. It's no reason to make assumptions about people's character. And character can't be used as evidence. So I'd really like to help figure out what the real story is, whatever it may be. The sheriff said that there's a festival in town next week. What's that about? Oh, it's an annual thing. We have it every October. There's a fair on the Market Street. There's food, rides. We get a lot of tourists from nearby states around that time. It's a good source of revenue for some of our smaller businesses here. 
that, of course, is less important in light of recent events. Good to hear you say that. Of course, we can't go around trying to wrap up cases based on our, our assumptions, whatever the situation may be. I like you, Blunt. I mean, these were people's lives that ended, and it's our job to figure out what really happened. So, I guess what I'm saying is, you can count on me during this investigation. Thanks. I'm hoping the local police will let me do the job I've been sent to do, though. I don't mean you. Detective, I know what you mean. Honestly speaking, Sheriff Harris is an asshole. <laughs> uh, I'm serious. He doesn't care about anything except running off, running off home and taking it easy. This case probably ruined his plans to relax and enjoy the festival week. I hate people like that. Officer Watts, though, he's really sweet. I know he comes across as a little obnoxious, but... Oh my god! <laughs> oh, shit! <laughs> Was that a lesson in the road? Sorry. I saw her. She was right there. Oh, it's the denim guy from the crowd. Why am I seeing her? Why am I thinking of her? Oh no, are you crazy? Okay. Jack's Auto Repair Shop. Jack's, eh? I hope, I hope he's nice. Jack's the name of the guy fixing my car. My poor car. That would be dangerous. It sure would. <laughs> hey. Oh, no. I'm still not trying to get the hang hang of the controls. He said his name's Jack. It's a good thing he was passing by when the crash happened. Hey, Jack. Sup, dude? <laughs> What's the issue with the car? Well, the headlights and bumper's gone. You'll need to have them replaced. I'm gonna have to check it if I got a replacement part so I can fix it. How long will it take you to fix it? A couple of days, three maybe, depending on how quickly I can get the parts. Shouldn't take more than four days at most. Oh boy. Hey dude, can you fetch me my big red re blah blah blah. Can you fetch me my big red wrench? It should be in a toolbox outside. <laughs> should I say no? <laughs> I'll be I'll be nice, it's my car. <laughs> You're amazing, bud. Thanks. Jack got us here and that. I take it? I think I'll wait for my car to be fixed instead. Apparently. Oof, what a beauty. I wonder if it's Jack's. Can we take it? Man, I'd love to, but I don't think Jack would appreciate me doing that. Anything over here? Okay. This could be the toolbox, Jack. Why is it all the way out here? It's locked. I'll need to ask Jack for the key. Jeez, I hope she's not hurt. Doesn't Jack need your help? Talk to me when you're okay. Oh, that's it. The tool 
box is locked, Jack. Oh, that's weird. Why did I lock it? Anyway, the key should... Apparently, uh, FBI agents all have to find keys, too. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. said it was somewhere behind the car? Oh! Alright, got the key. Hmm, tar, shovel, wonder what Jack uses them for. Fix potholes? Oh, I didn't... open. Let's see what's in here. We need the red one. I thought I saw another backpack thing. Oh. Hey, you found that wrench yet? Yeah, that's it. I love this wrench. Thanks, bud. Uh, Alright, let's ask about the car. That red convertible there, is that yours? Yeah, man. It's a 65 Mustang. I love that ride. I got it used for pretty cheap off a guy who couldn't take care of her anymore. Luckily, the car's got something that keeps it running like new now. A new engine? No, dude. It gets, it's got me. I spent all my free time on her, fixing her up, making sure she runs better than new. And I keep her happy by taking her out on long, beautiful drives on the roads outside town. You got a shovel and some tar there. What do you use those for? Er, uh, that dude... I do a bit of construction work on the side sometimes, you know, fixing up driveways and stuff for some extra cash. Alright, in conversation. Detective, you're here investigating Diane's murder, right? And Chris, yes. Do you have any information that could help us? I don't know about information, man. I just know that he did it. What do you mean? Chris, he killed her. Why do you say this? I... everyone could see coming. Diane, they say she was troubled, scared of him even. Someone in this town should have done something. We all knew this could happen. But no one cared enough about them to bother interfering. How do you know all this? Uh, I don't know. Rumors around town mostly? Did you know Chris and Diane well? Not really. People here barely did. They were not the kind to come out and make friends with their new neighbors, it looks like. They still felt like outsiders to the rest of us. What were you doing last night? I... Wh what was I doing last night? Yeah, that's what I asked. I, oh right, I, I drove a couple miles from here and drank a few beers while I enjoyed the view. At night? Yeah, the stars. Man, you see? Was there anyone with you? Did you meet anyone? Nah, man, there's something like the pleasure of your own company sometimes. Alright, thanks for your help, Jack. We shall be back if we have any more questions. Of course you will. What do you mean, Jack? For your car, man. Come back when it's fixed. You get way too serious way too fast, man. Chill out. Wait, so how do I view my... Uh, 
No game hat. Oh, I can skip dialogue with that button. Okay. Dad, Jet, Journal. Oh, that's how it got up there. Okay. Toggle smoking? Okay. Oops. All it did was make him... Oh, it's making him change the hand he puts his cigarette in? Oh, no. Smoking? Not smoking. Okay. Oh. Oh! Neat! Okay. Jack. Early 30s. <laughs> Was intoxicated. <laughs> I shouldn't expect them to be very helpful. Wow, he was busy. Oh, I did that twice or some. Wow, I did it three times. Okay. <laughs> Oops. All right, cool. Can. Why can't... Okay. Hey! Hi. Are you sure you're okay? Yeah, I'm fine, surprisingly. I'm really sorry about the crash. I didn't know what... It's alright, especially since we're okay. Something else worries me, though. What's that? What happened back there? How did we hit that tree? Uh, I thought I saw something. What'd you see? Uh, person. That's kind of creepy. Yeah. But are you okay otherwise? I mean, I don't know you, so I don't know if this is a regular thing. No offense. No, that's okay. I know what you mean. Yeah, I mean, you collapsed back there at the crime scene, too, and then this. Yeah, I don't know. I've been a little, little dizzy all day. Maybe I just need a nap. Maybe she should drive. Seeing this kind of stuff kind of bums me out. Um... I'm just saying, if there's anything wrong, you could talk to me about it. Don't hesitate. Uh, I won't. <laughs> I'm gonna say that. I won't. Oh, he won't hesitate. That's probably it. It's probably meant to be nice. Uh, I'm gonna drive to the next town for a bit. Want me to drop you on the way? Guess so. Oh, wow. Here we are, the famous Pine View Main Street. I'm kidding. Not much to see here, really. Let's see if we can talk to some of the locals on the way to the hotel. Alright, it isn't very busy at this time of day, but there should be a few people out here. Father Smith knows a lot about Pine View. It'd be a good idea to talk to him before heading to the hotel. He should be around St. Madeline's Church. Oh, also, here's a map of Pine View so you can get around town by yourself. Oh. Cool. Okay. The 
fiction or non-fiction? Fiction. Me too! <laughs> we have so much in common, Blunt. Ooh, cafe. You should come here for breakfast someday. The owner, Mark, is a pretty great guy. You mean me? Okay, I guess you're Mark. That must be Mark. I sure am. Oh, is the officer talking out loud? Hey, detective. You're here investigating the shootings, right? Yes, I am. The whole thing is so tragic. Anyway, do you want some tea? Coffee? This is my cafe here. No, that's alright, I... Come over here if you want a pint! Keep your unhealthy habits to yourself, Alan. So one's cool and one's a nerd. Okay. <laughs> too much coffee's unhealthy, too. Also, if you haven't noticed, he's already smoking a cigarette. Ignore him. He just likes to annoy me. And I let it get to me all the same. Who is that? That's Alan, owner of the bar next door, and my brother. Twin brother. Not that you know by the way we lead our lives, I don't know how we ended up as polar opposites. I know, I got all the good stuff. Ugh. Anyway, you had questions? How long has it been since you moved to Pineview, Mark? I was born here. My family lived here many years before that. We left the city when I was about 10. My dad was looking for better work. I returned, I returned soon after I graduated, about nine years back. I prefer the life here. Big cities just aren't for me. Now it's just me, my books, and my coffee shop. Life is simple, and I love it. Did Alan also come with you at the same time? No, Alan. He only joined here five years back to get a fresh start. Maybe he can tell you more about that. Do you live by yourself, Mark? No, I'm married. I've been for about six years now. Met my wife in my own cafe, actually. Aw, oh, it's a cute story. We are very happy for you, Mark. Okay, it wasn't much of a story, but okay. <laughs> Does Alan also live with you? No, but he lives close by. Was he in last night? Yes, I think so. I didn't check or meet him, though. Did you see Chris and Diane often? No, no, barely. A handful of times, maybe. They came into the cafe a few times, but that was in the early days when they just move in, moved in. They wouldn't say much to me or anyone else here, and mostly kept to themselves. Or, I could say they didn't have eyes for anyone else. To put it bluntly, they looked very much in love. Is there anything else you could tell me about them? Anything that stands out? Well, I kind of identified with Chris in a way. It sounds like he moved here for the peace of his peace of mind this place provides and to start a small business for himself. What business? He's been trying to get a hotel project off the ground here from what I hear. He had trouble getting the project approved. Maybe Father Smith can tell us more about it. He's involved in the planning committee. Can you tell me where, where you were last night? Sure. As always, I closed my place by 8 p.m. I bought some supplies from the general store down the street, and then I went home. I assume the storekeeper will remember that? Yes, Mrs. Brown was in last night at the time. She should be able to confirm what I just said. And Alan, could he confirm this? He didn't come to work yesterday. took a day off. He said he was feeling unwell, so he stayed at home all day. 
Looks like that's passed, luckily. He looks fine today. Anyway, I went back home after that, changed, and went to, for a jog as usual. Came back, took a nice, long, warm bath, made myself a cup of coffee, and had dinner with my wife. Then read a book for an hour or so, and was probably asleep by 10.30pm as always. Have you noticed anything unusual lately? Anything out of the ordinary? Hmm, no, can't say I have. Everything's been pretty much the same as usual. Okay, we're done with him. Mm, she doesn't say anything? Okay. Huh, it looks like Alan's locked up and left. That's alright, we could talk to him tomorrow. Grandpa's Bakery. That's one name to that's one way to name a bakery. Uh is that him right there? <laughs> he may be kind of creepy at times, but he sure knows how to bake well. I may be old, but I'm not completely deaf, you know. Sorry, grandpa. I'm not your grandpa. That's Grandpa, owner of Grandpa's Bakery. Is he your grandfather? Oh, no he isn't. Is his name Grandpa then? I don't really know, actually. Okay then. Hello, um, Grandpa? I'm not your Grandpa. And your name is? Grandpa. <laughs> okay. Mr. Grandpa, I was wondering if I could ask you a few questions. And I was wondering if I could ask Miss Brown there out on a date. But wondering ain't doing, is it? Just look at her. Ooh, boy, it makes me feel 40 years younger. She does. Hmm, do you ever plan to grow up, Grandpa? Any more growing up and I might just die. And I ain't planning on doing that before I ask you out. Goodness, such immaturity at this age. She likes me. I know she does. You're deluded. Woohoo! <laughs> anyway, you had questions, young man? I thought I did. Oh. Yeah, I agree. He's funny. How long have you lived in Pineview? Forever. My family's been here for generations. Guess I'm the last in line now. My shop's been here for generations too, you know, and I think I've taken real good care of it. Oh, and she's taken real good care of me too. Where were you last night around 12 a.m.? Where'd you think I was? Sleeping. Were you asleep? That's right, what else do you, do you expect an old man to do at a time of the night? Can anyone confirm this? No, no one can. I live alone. <sighs> what can you tell me about Chris and Diane? When, they, when they'd first moved in, Chris would often come in the evening and buy some things from me. He'd come in daily, almost. Look pretty cheerful too then a couple months after that he just stopped coming the last few times he came I could see that something wasn't right maybe trouble with this lady I don't know he, he and Diane went to the church maybe a couple of times once or twice I came over here after for coffee and donuts they were quite a couple I tell ya he was a quiet and nonchalant one she was an exciting electrifying energy a classic case of opposites attracted to each other. If what people say is true, I don't know how things went so wrong so fast. But then, with things, with these things you can never say. This is all about four to five months back. After that, I hardly ever saw them out here again. Mm -hmm. 
Have you noticed anything unusual? Anything out of the ordinary in recent days? Hmm. Now that I think about it, I actually might have. Yes? Mrs. Brown's been tying her hair in a much tighter bun lately. I wonder if that means... Is she softening up and trying to hide the fact? that fact? I, I don't think that's what he wanted to know. Aw, oh, Grandpa, you noticed these things. I mean it when I say it, beautiful. I'm a passionate lover. <laughs> Very passionate. Damn it, Grandpa. Ahem, hello. I was talking about the possible murders. Did you notice anything unusual leading up to that? Oh. No. Much the same. Can't say I did. You live by yourself? <sighs> yes, yes I do. Kids left Pine Few for the big city. Too boring here, they said. I wonder if he's a passionate kisser, too. <laughs> uh, it's been many years since the wife died. So I run this shop here by myself, and I live down the street pretty close by. But that's alright. I got friends here to keep me company. Officer Blunt pays me a visit every day, for instance. It's always a pleasure to meet you, Grandpa. Also, there's Mrs. Brown. She makes every day exciting. Please, God, give me strength. Oh, look how she flirts. <laughs> okay, we'll talk later, dude. Not your grandpa. Cool. These donuts, sh donuts sure look good. What do you mean they look good? They're the best in Pineview. The best damn donuts made with Grandpa's love and warmth. Want to buy some? Maybe later. Thanks, Gramps. Why'd you call me? Hey. That's Mrs. Brown. Hmm, who is it? Oh, detective, you'll have to excuse me. I'm awfully busily sorry, I'm awfully busy at the moment. What sleeping in your chair? New inventories just come in and I need to take stock. Alright, open the second box, Johnny. No problem, we'll talk later. Hello, detective. Oh, you're not gonna say more than that? Okay. We should talk, have a talk with Father Smith before heading to the hotel. He knows a lot about Pineview. The church is up ahead. All right. Oh, whoops. Oh, is that a lake or something? Oh, it must be a lake. Hey, wh why are you running away, dude? Come back! No! Stop running away from me! Constructed in late 1700s, St. Um, Madeline's Church is named after St. Madeline, patron saint of elderly animals. Okay. On her feast day of November 17th, it is customary for children to bring their animals to the church to be blessed. St. Madeline is remembered for her love for animals and nature, and is often pictured along with her favorite cat during her lifetime, Angus. Oh, she sounds cool. That must be Father Smith. Father Smith? Ah, hello, Detective. Stone? Detective Stone, first time in Pineview, I assume. Yes, I only just arrived. I wanted... That is good. That is good. What do you think of it? Do you like it here? <laughs> it's kind of boring. <laughs> Honestly speaking, I find it kind of boring. Of course, it is quite difficult for most city folk to fit into this place. They think like they'll like the slower pace of life here, but they're mistaken. Eventually, they try changing our town to something they're familiar with. 
Detective, you must agree. We wouldn't want that, would we? There's a way of life here, and I do my best to maintain that, for the good of my people. The ones that are here are more than just a merry whim. I see. Anyway, Detective, you had questions? I heard Chris was trying to start a hotel here. Hmm. As you're part of Pine Muse Planning Committee, can you tell me what that was about exactly? Sure. Chris wanted to open a, a hotel with about 40 or s rooms or so. He said he wanted to keep it small in accordance with our bylaws, but even 40 was almost pushing it. These things always grow out of hand. Once the tourists started coming in, they'll see how untouched a place Pineview really is. Demand would increase, and of course, Chris wouldn't want to pass up the opportunity to cash in on that. Regardless, we never got to that point. Chris was al always kept messing up his papers whenever he came in for approval. He'd either misplace them or mess up some details. There were delays on the construction site, too. I guess the delays cost him money. It was all going downhill fast. And well, then this happened. Hmm. What can you tell me about Chris and Diane? Did you know them well? Not too well. They came to church a couple times after they moved to Pineview, but then soon stopped coming at all. They withdrew themselves from the rest of the community, and I can't say that helped them. Friends can help in difficult times, and it's obvious they were beginning to have rid really difficult times by the end. If they continued to come to church, I could have offered some guidance. Sometimes relationships can entangle you. But, unfortunately, it had to come to this. Whatever their troubles, it looked like they made each other suffer for it. I'm sure you'll learn what most of us here already know. In any case, I wish you luck with your investigation. Can you tell me where you were last night, Father Smith? I was here all night. I finished up some work, and then I went to bed by 10 p.m., I'd say. Okay, I guess that's it. We'll talk later. I'm sure we will. So, wait. Um... Go to the hotel. Okay. All right then, the hotel is further down Overlook Street. Check, check the map if you get confused. I'll see you tomorrow morning, Mark's Cafe. Sounds good, bye. All right. Wonder if this is run by a little old lady. Oh. oh look, some millennials. You know Chris killed her, right? What, how do you know that? I don't know, that's what everyone says happened. Anyway, you play that game I gave you? Nah, not yet, man. It's 3D, man. 3D. Hmm, I kind of in the mood for something more scary. <sighs> May I suggest Silent Hill is a very good game. It's one of my favorites. Oh, that's all. Oh, he says, I love video games. Okay. Wait. It doesn't say where I'm out on the map, though. That sucks. Oh, I must be on Overlook Street. Can Am I allowed to go anywhere else but the hotel? Guess not. Well. 
Oh, hello. I'm Mary Patterson. I run this hotel with my husband. Oh, you're not old. You're Detective Stone, I presume? Yes, I am. Good to meet you. Yeah, they are apparently <laughs> deadly premonition-esque. I prepared our best room on the top floor for you. Oh, did a, a famous rock star stay there? It isn't the biggest establishment, and so it isn't too fancy, but I think you'll like it here. You must be tired. There's hot water in your room, and dinner is ready. Well, I, it's 96. I assume there's hot water in the room. Thank you, Mrs. Patterson. Oh, but I want I wanted to talk to the other guy. Oh, well. Reminds me of better times. That's the way to the bathroom. Let's use it. Yes. Use the toilet. <laughs> that feels good. That's a light switch. That's better. <laughs> My eyes. My clothes are in there. I can change if I want. Ooh, let's change. Ooh. We can change his clothes. I love this game. Okay, let's see. Uh, John. Okay. Casual. Formal. Stressed out. Sleepwear. Okay. Pine View's a beautiful place. Painfully beautiful. Okay. Oh. Can I leave? <laughs> I don't want to dehydrate myself. Okay. Let's turn off the lights. That's better. Looks comfy. Hmm, should I go to sleep now? Go to sleep. Oh, you wanna get up me? Okay, one sec. Oh my god, he's even smoking like York in the bed. <laughs> what the hell happened back there today? After all these days. God damn. No, Mark. There's no peace of mind here. The silence, it only lets your thoughts speak louder. Okay. Because he has a troubled pass. Oh, I'm in a red room. Okay. Am I dreaming? Watch out for zombies! This is a horrible dream. Are those red leaves? Is a case in here? Whee! Oh god, no. No, I don't want to see this. I don't want to remember. I need to get out. Why am I here? I need to wake up. I need to wake up. Wake up! Oh, oops. What the? Am I awake? I can't- Oh, oh, he has night terrors? This is horrifying. What's going on? Uh, try to move ahead. Okay. Wait, what's that? What the? 
my eyes. <laughs> uh, hello, ghost. Holy shit. Abigail, is that you? Michael. You did this. Why? How could you? I don't know. I don't know. I... How can you live after doing something like that? Yeah, I think he's, he does too. You have no idea how hard it is to go on without you. Then why go on? What's... Oh. Whoa. Is she telling you to commit suicide? That's not cool. What's the point? I don't know. I have to... What is that? What is that? It looks like... I don't know. An ape person? Okay. For your happiness? Do you feel that you deserve that anymore? Damn. This, this Abigail person's kind of a bitch. Or for this case, do you think anyone even cares about it? For whom, Michael? You protect yourself from thoughts about me. You need to hide me from yourself so that you can live. Is it worth it? I know. I'm not sure. I miss you, Michael. Gasp. Oh, I get it. That thing was probably sitting on the dresser. That was why it was hunched weird. Officer Blunt said I was to meet her at Mark's Cafe. Better get going. Gotta have my morning cigarette. Let's go meet her in our PJs. Okay. I want to look like York, so I'm doing that. Phew. Yes. Hello, detective. What's wrong with that guy? He must be really sleepy. How are you feeling today? search the house for letters or diaries, right? Alright, then let's... Uh, discuss the case. What do you think is going on so far? Well, we have what looks like a murder-suicide at first glance. We still don't know how anyone could have gotten in or out without leaving any trace or being spotted. The only way it makes sense is if they were let in by the couple. So, they'd have to be friends? Maybe. And they'd have to know where the gun was stored. Excuse me. And catch them by surprise, seeing as there was no signs of struggle. Yes. I can't see any of that playing out in my head right now. And honestly, I can't either. But there's a lot of but there's a lot we don't know yet. More information will help. Hopefully, we'll get some fingerprints on the gun, too. So I guess we just need to go out and learn more about it all. Anyone you suspect as of now? I don't want to think about that just yet. It's totally Grandpa. Grandpa did it. <laughs> It'll cloud my mind and I might start seeing things with a bias. For now, let's figure out the how rather than the who. Alright. I need more coffee. He's just lying on the table, staring at his cup of tea. I wonder what's wrong with him. Let's ask. Ahem, sir, are you okay? Obviously. Aren't you gonna drink your tea? I'm waiting for it to reach just the right temperature. I'll drink it then with my 
complete attention. I like staring at the cup and watching the steam rise while I wait. Uh huh. Okay. It's beautiful, isn't it? Isn't it? A cup of tea holds so many answers to life, to happiness. Uh, does coffee hold any answers? Obviously. It's just a cup of hot beverage, isn't it? That's not the point. Well then, how does a cup of coffee hold answers to those questions? It's simple. If you can enjoy a cup of tea or coffee, as it were, the best possible experience in the universe, then you know happiness. If you can't, you won't truly appreciate the grandest of experiences either. Don't you agree? Uh, should it be mean? I'll say I have no idea. <laughs> Oh well, that's how it often is. That's okay. Oh, let's, can I talk to any of these people? No? Hey. Hey, Mark. Just a cup of coffee, Mark. progress with the case? Do you know who might have done it? I can't discuss at all that with you, Mark. Oh, of course. I, I understand. Well, I hope you can enjoy your time in Pineview or despite the circumstances. That's really not a priority, but thanks. Hmm, that looks great. Got the coffee. We're just gonna visit the crime scene. Uh, yes. Let's not waste any more time. All right, lead the way. Oh, Ellen's back. Let's talk to him and see if he can tell us anything. Hey, cool twin. What you doing? Tell me about yourself. How long have you been here? That sort of thing. Sure, if you talked to my brother Mark already, you probably know I moved here five years ago. I needed a change in my life, so I thought I'd give this place another shot. Turns out, it's just as bloody boring as it was when I was ten. But hey, it got me out of the place I'd begun to hate even more, so it's an improvement, you know? And he used... And you get used to the pace eventually. Mark did me a big favor, giving me half of his cafe to start a business in. Oh, that was nice. Guess he's not too pleased with the business I chose to run, though. <laughs> he's a cool, he's a good guy. Ellen, where were you? S wh sorry, where would you say you were on the night of the shootings? As I'm sure Mark must have told you already, I was at home. I wasn't feeling well, so I stayed home instead. I like how that guy's just standing, listening to our conversation. <laughs> guys, can you move? I like to walk by, but... Mm. Is there anyone that can confirm this? Apart from Mark, I don't know. Since I didn't leave home, no one saw me, you know? Wasn't your pub open that night, Alan? I'd hope it was. I left Lenny in charge. He helps me out sometimes. Lenny, can we talk to him? I'm afraid not. He left town later that night. Should be back soon, though. Let us know when he's back. We'd like to ask him some questions. Will do, officer. No, not at all. I'm the kind of person who minds his own business. I don't go interfering with people's affairs and their lives. What do you mean? I just don't go wasting my time getting to know people if there's no need for it. To me, it looked like they preferred to mind their own business as well. So no, I didn't know them at all. Okay, we'll talk later. Okay. We 
Can you talk now? Hello, ma'am. Hmm, who is it? Ah, you're the detective, aren't you? Come to ask about the murders? Something troubles you, my boy. What is it? What do you mean? I know a troubled soul when I see one, detective. But I understand that you don't have time for such questions. That is good. Neither do I. Now, what is it? How long have you lived in Pineview, Mrs. Brown? I was born here. I barely stepped out of Pineville, Pineville, Pineview all of my life. I started this shop when I was about 25. I had to support myself once I lost my husband. Do you live alone, or do you have family here with you? Johnny's the only family I've got. He's my grandson. Lost my husband in the war. I was about 25. You must have seen Johnny, right? Always running around, taking photos with his camera. His parents left him in a tough situation by making some stupid decisions in their lives. So I take care of him now. He's a good boy. He spends a lot of time helping his grandma around the shop. I'm getting older now, too. Willpower and mental strength can only get you so far, you know. Time catches up with you eventually. Not that I lack any mental strength. I've single-handedly taken care of a lot here. You really have, Mrs. Brown. I really look up to you. You're doing quite well for yourself, too, young lady. Where were you on the night of the shootings, Mrs. Brown? I went to bed around 9 p.m. Johnny can probably confirm that. He was home, too. What can you tell me about Chris and Diane, Mrs. Brown? Ah, uh, they were doomed from the start. Why do you say that? I told you. I know a troubled soul when I see one. And those two... I've seen it so many times over the years. One can always tell. Others will tell you that they were very much in love, but something wasn't right. I always knew that. And then when things really did start going wrong, everyone heard about it. I guess we're done. Okay, detective. Take care now. Grandpa, do you have anything else to say? Oh, no. Okay, so on Main Street. Rain, rain. I'm getting old. Now, what did I come here for? You couldn't borrow a car from the department? Okay, they just like to sit out in the rain. Okay. Whoa, dude, what's up? Heard you're investigating those totally crazy shootings. Yes, I am. Sick. Why? Do you have any information that could help us? Whoa, no way, dude. That's, to that's so totally not my scene. It's way too sketchy for him. Yeah, too sketchy, dude. It's not rad at all. Exactly. Not rad. Oh, we're, we are going to- okay. <laughs> Where were you the sixth of this month? Whoa, whoa, why the suspicious type questions, dude? Just answer, please. Man, I was at home, you know. Practicing some sick tricks. You were? That's sick. Hell yeah.
What's wrong, Chad? Why do you have to ask all personal questions, dude? That two right here in the middle of the streets in broad daylight? He lives with his mother. But only until he gets his skating career started. Yeah. It's nothing to be ashamed of, Chad. Do you know Chris or Diane at all? No, dude, no way. Those two were totally weird. Most of us kept our distance. Weird how? They stayed locked up in their home all day. Fighting or something. He hit her too. That's what we heard, at least. No, dude, we just kept our distance. Skating's where it's at! <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, it's Keith. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> That's rad. Oh. A younger Keith and Lily. Oh, were you the person standing in the- no, I guess you weren't. Sigh. Why are you just standing in the rain? Talk to- no? Because he didn't fix the crime scene tape. What are we looking for? Nobody in this town seems to know much about them. Maybe their room can tell us more. On it, detective. That's me. Um... Uh, why is, uh, you're not freaked out that it's not showing the back of your head? <laughs> I am. Relatively. Did you sleep well last night? Not a wink. Maybe you should see a doctor. Oh no, it's nothing. I'll be fine. Moisturizer, body butter, makeup items. Okay. It's a photograph a photograph of Chris and Diane. There's a diary here. <clears throat> it's empty, damn it. A bunch of travel magazines. Look like they had a subscription. A book on journalism. Fiction books. What's this? The Dreamer's Guide to the World. Looks like a self improvement book about travel. Interesting. There's a handwritten note on the first page. To Diane, never give up on your dreams. Love, Chris. 10th of January, 1996. This must have been Diane's bedside. There's some interesting stuff on this bulletin board. That's a trash can. Wow, you're really good at this. Is that sarcasm? Sorry, I can't help it sometimes. I 
financial calculations looked like they were planning for something big. Or at least one of them was. It's a photo of Chris and Diane and some guy. Do you recognize the third guy, Officer Blood? Don't think I've ever seen him. Must be from outside town. Hmm. Or do-it-yourself, journalism, and travel books, and a couple of novels. A globe, a boombox, nothing of interest here. Oh, those are some nice tapes. Let's see what we have here. A list of locations. Madagascar, Antarctica, Ukraine. Four question mark, five question mark. And below the list in a different handwriting says, Half the world away. It's underlined twice. There's a shopping list, some phone numbers. Excuse me, pictures of animals, the ocean. I think they're pictures of Madagascar. Possible. Another list, woodworking projects to do. Bookcase for living room, custom chair for Diane. Bookcase for bedroom, this has been struck through. For some front lawn project. I'm guessing Chris was into woodworking. Oh, what's this? Talk about issues, convey patiently. No sacrifices, talk about it and discuss what needs work. Three, analyzing everything equals annoying. Code, it's happening. Shut up, give space. Which one of them do you think wrote these? Uh, Chris? Chris, looks like he was the organized type. Into making lists and everything. The woodworking one's definitely his, and the handwriting is the same. Yeah, makes sense. Okay. Um, am I supposed to? No. Got the key, he was behind the painting. Great. All right, not a lot here. There's a brochure for a travel agency, a do-it-yourself woodworking book, and a bunch of letters. What do they say? Most of them seem to be from Diane to Chris. Oh wow, that's a lot of hearts. Let's see if we can find anything useful among these. So I'll be writing these to keep in touch while we can't meet. I don't know how, but I'm glad you changed my mind. Look at life in a different way. We're really dumb together, but I kind of love that. Oh wait, this one looks different. There's a severe lack of hearts in this one. Kind of. It's from Chris to Brad. Looks like he forgot to send it or decided not to. Hey Brad, sorry for disappearing on you last week during your party. You see, after I walked out... Oh, can you flash back? Sunday, 11.40 p.m. 95, okay. I can't believe you said that. I know, everyone was looking at me. Should have been there, man. Oh, hang on. I think Emily's calling me. Go around and socialize. Meet new people. Make new friends. Yeah, sounds amazing. Haha. <laughs> Do what you will, man. I'll see you in a bit. See ya, Brad. Alright, now to get away from humans for a while. Hi, 
Okay, this isn't so bad. Oh, that must be Diane. Oh, hello? I didn't know there was anyone else out here. You, you, you walked up to him. Yeah, okay, I guess you didn't see him. Oh, I... Holy shit, that's a ten. I can uh, head back inside if you like. Don't feel like you need to because of me. Isn't that... It's just... You don't like people that much? You're right, I don't. I'm not really a fan, no. I'm sure they won't take offense. It isn't that, it's just, uh... Go on. The more I get to know them, the less I can stand them. Shit, I hope she didn't think that was directed at her. I suggest staying outside, then. You'll, you're will you less likely to be ambushed. Phew. Or go back in. We don't want to risk you getting to know me. Shit. Uh. Beautiful evening. Beautiful. Yeah, well, there's the... Fireflies? What about them? Their color, the way they dance, aren't they beautiful? Damn it, abort the weird topic, Chris. What do you do? What do you do and stuff? And stuff? Huh. I actually don't know. I graduated last year. Journalism, of all things. Ugh, what I was thinking. Anyway, I'm planning on taking exams so I can study abroad. And then I have to do well and then look for scholarship and... Sorry, sorry. Listen to me prattling on. Forget it. Honestly, it's alright. Go on. It's just... I'm not really attached to anything here. I'd rather just... I have stupid dreams of being somewhere else. Anywhere else. What do you think you'll find when you get there? I guess I'll find myself somewhere else. That'd be a good start. My name's Diane, by the way. I'm Chris. Who do you know here? Did you come alone? Don't ask a woman that, Chris. Jesus. Alone, actually. Though I came to meet Emily, we share classes. Oh, that's nice. Brad's an old friend of mine. Emily's boyfriend? He's a really cool guy. I'm talking a lot. Emily's got herself a nice place out here. Chris, stop talking. I can't wait to have a place of my own. Something small, less modern. It's still beautiful, right? Uh, even the house is beautiful. Do you not think so? It's a house. Oh. You have me totally perplexed, by the way. I just can't understand your way of looking at things. You wouldn't be the first person to say that. I appreciate your fireflies appreciation. <laughs> but they're just fireflies, you know? No, I totally get it. I totally get you. I'm just... I don't know. I guess I'm weird when it comes to these things. That's one way of putting it. I just... I tr try to see the beauty in everything. I'm an asshole. I am a pretentious asshole. <laughs> you should be an artist. Are you an artist? Or a writer, perhaps? Do you write books about how there is beauty in all things? Aha! Go on. Poke fun. Being serious, what do you do? It's a long story, but I guess you could say I'm a businessman. I wouldn't have guessed. Huh, thanks. There's a reason and a story for that, but maybe it's one for another time. Oh, another time. Smooth. It's interesting. What is? Meeting someone like you, here. He who sees the beauty in the mundane things. 
Hell, I can look at the same painting for about five minutes before I can start thinking about my about lunch or my car or... Art and paintings have nothing to do with it. It's more the little things, precious moments, loving life. I'm sorry, Chris. You lost me at precious moments. Seriously? It's just all a little bit too blah? Is there nothing I can do to change your mind? Oh, hon, I would love to see you try. Okay, Diane, what's the time? What? The time, what is it? About 11.45, why? All right, you're coming with me. I want to show you something. What? I don't even know you. Even better, we'll be back in 20 minutes. Come on, it's not that far. Fine, but you're carrying my shoes. Hurry up. Pretty cool, right? Yeah, I guess it looks nice. I don't get what's so special, though. It's just buildings. Thought of people just living life, this moment, it's a cool view. Uh, it's a cool view. Well, I'll say that. I just think it's a freaking cool view. What? A valley and a city in the background? As dreary as my life is, I've seen better. If I were you, I'd probably be freaking out about looking at sunsets from my window every evening. Ha 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 ha! What? I was kidding. That That isn't what I got you here for. But it's about to get pretty cool right about now. What? Don't you dare. It's 12 a.m. Look! Okay, people are throwing out lanterns. Happy New Year! I forgot it was December 31st. Okay, that's... I'll give you that one. Hmm. December 31st, that's when they first met. Yes, that. Whoa. Detective, are you okay? You look a little pale. Brad, we should try locating him. Uh, detective! <laughs> Did she just pick him up? Oh, my head. Detective. Where? What? Michael, you gotta tell me what's going on. I'm really worried. You should really see a doctor. Uh, I'm not sure what you're talking about, officer. Are you serious? You collapsed. Again, you were out for at least five minutes. How did you get him here? Uh, I think I tripped her knocked myself out. I don't know why you won't talk about it. Uh, anyway, we'll sit here for a while. Any more of this and you're going straight to the doctor. You got it? Yeah. Well, tell me something. What? I don't know. About your life back home? How's it like? Walk back there, how different is it from all this? It's a completely different world. There's always something to work on. The station's always full of life and memories. I like that. You can get a bit crazy at times, but it's great if you can handle it. I've been thinking about moving to a bigger station someday. I mean, 
the idea of handling bigger cases, being in the thick of it, all sounds exciting. Sounds like the kind of thing I like to do. I'm not sure if I'd be able to handle it though. Just this one case, it's affecting me emotionally. I think you're capable of say that. It's only been about a day, but I know you'd be able you'll be able to more than just handle it. In fact, I think you do very well. Ah, oh, you really think so? Absolutely. Thanks, Detective, but I also worry about the people I leave behind here. Oh look, it's Officer Asshole. My mother, she lives with me. I feel it would be selfish of me to just leave. And there's so many other people here too that depend on me. Hey, Detective. Feeling better yet? The small town air getting to you? You look really cheery, Ryan. Gotta see what I found. I'll get his coffee. Detective, you should sit. I'll be fine. Okay. Well, I think this is where I'm gonna end it for tonight. I'm really liking it so far. Um, I like the art style. It would be cool if there's dialogue, but um, it is an independent game, so I'm not surprised. But um, I am really invested in the mystery already. It's obviously not a murder suicide. Mm. And the characters are cool. They remind me of Deadly Premonition. Yeah, it's really cute. So I will continue this tomorrow at 9 p.m. And we'll see if we can get a little bit farther in the case. I have no idea how long this game is, but uh, I, I assume I'll be able to do a couple st streams at least. But yeah. So thanks everybody for watching. I will speak to you all again tomorrow. Have a good night.